Direct from Bangalore, India, ANN highlights the Adventist Church's expansion across the region. Discover the transformative mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for the deaf in Jamaica. Sabbath School classes launch Music Project in Brazil. Adventist University in Germany and Adventist Institute in Uruguay celebrate decades of education with eternal values. Stay tuned for these and other stories of hope and transformation from ANN News. In November 2023, the Adventist Institute of Uruguay celebrated its 80th anniversary. A significant historical milestone, especially considering the secular context of the country. To commemorate the occasion, an event was held with civil and ecclesiastical authorities where students and alumni praised God for the school's journey. When it comes to quality public services, Uruguay is usually a reference among its South American neighbors, but the latest figures have raised alarm bells. According to the National Institute of Educational Evaluation, linked to the Ministry of Education of Uruguay, the country continues to suffer the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2022, school dropout rates nearly doubled, reaching almost 20%. Additionally, eight out of every 100 students dropped out of school during the pandemic, which is equivalent to more than 21,500 students out of the classrooms. But this reality seems to not have affected the Adventist Institute of Uruguay. The truth is, I think it's the best place I could have chosen to study. I don't know. I feel better than in many other schools I've been to. I think it's the best decision I could have made, and I believe this is truly the place that God wants for Adventist youth like me who are here. So I think it's the best place to study. On the 17th and 18th of November, the Adventist Institute of Uruguay celebrated 80 years. Civil and religious authorities were present to celebrate the occasion. Among them was Pastor Mark Jitar, who was a student and now works as the director of the institute. I am excited to know that I was a student. I meet with my former classmates and they can't believe it, neither can I, that I am the director. But the glory is for our God who transforms lives when we put ourselves in His hands. The CFO of IAU confirms the positive results but also highlights the difficulties and emphasizes the importance of God's help and that of donors from different parts of the world who send funds to sustain the institute. This is a school that we are celebrating now for eight decades. It hasn't been easy, it isn't easy. But I want to take this moment to thank many people who are always providing us with donations. Neighboring churches, churches that, together with the Institute, invest in the students, invest in the children. This whole event, basically, is for them, it is for them, and it is with them. Many people came who passed through here. This is their alma mater and it hasn't been easy, but we have a God who has always been with us. And I know that he will continue to do so in the future as well. But above all, in the opinion of the school director, the legacy of these 80 years of history is invaluable. It leaves a lot of hope, leaves also many children full of values and principles, and above all, what we are leaving is eternal life in their lives, that they know Christ as the solution to all their problems. In Germany, Friedensau Adventist University celebrates 125 years. Founded in 1899 as a missionary school, Friedensau Adventist University in Germany proudly celebrates its 125th anniversary. Affiliated with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the institution offers 10 degrees in social sciences and theology. Established as the Industry and Mission School in 1899, the campus evolved amid challenges like World War I. Post-World War II, Soviet occupation threatened its closure, but the university triumphed and resumed operations in 1947. Over the years, it transformed into Friedensau Theological Seminary and, in 1990, gained state accreditation as a university. Today, Friedensau is a hub of academic excellence and global research collaborations. As it embarks on a year-long celebration, special events will mark its enduring legacy. Adra Spain brings hope and shelter to earthquake-affected villages in Morocco's Atlas region. 
The team focuses on areas over 1,500 meters above sea level, battling extreme winter conditions. Collaborating with local partners, they provide immediate and midterm housing, enhance hygiene facilities, distribute cattle for livelihoods, and empower youth. A holistic six month effort for lasting impact in the Atlas Mountains. Daniel and Marta visit one of the villages most affected by the earthquake last September in Morocco. Since then, temporary camps and plastic tents have been accommodating entire populations whose homes were destroyed by the 6.8 magnitude earthquake. Villages like this one, located at over 1 1,500 meters above sea level and difficult to access, have been classified as in urgent need. They require temporary shelters before the winter cold further complicates their daily lives. Extreme below zero temperatures are expected during winter nights. The Adra Spain team has visited and identified different villages in the Atlas region, where they will focus their efforts on building new temporary shelters. In Morocco, this project will extend over the next six months and, with the help of all involved donors, will provide medium-term housing solutions, improve hygiene options for these populations and promote their self-sufficiency. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Western Visayas, Philippines, responds to the I Will Go initiative of the World Church by organizing an orientation and training program for leaders. Empowering churches in the region for more intense evangelistic efforts was the proposal of the meeting, which focused on the theme, Evangelism to the Next Level. Emphasizing the importance of financial stewardship, the program included discussions on evangelism strategies for 2024, the church's vision pointed to a transformative leap in evangelistic efforts, emphasizing the purpose of filling heaven, not just church pews. To achieve this, combined actions were promoted, exploring the characteristics of the people in Visayas, known for being warm and welcoming, reflecting the typical hospitality of the Philippines and the love of Jesus. The event concluded with participants ready to elevate the spread of the good news and actively contribute to hastening the return of the Lord. From Jamaica comes the challenges and achievements of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Port Moore, established to serve the deaf community. With enthusiasm, expressiveness, and beauty and gestures, a mother helped spread the gospel, and today there are over 80 members eager to learn more about Jesus. Being deaf poses a lot of challenge in learning about the gospel. Many of the deaf persons are not reading English language. And even if it is from a Christian background, if they do go to church, they, they don't learn anything because there's no interpreter. Thinking of opportunities for hearing impaired persons like her daughter, my Esther, Sister McLeish taught sign language throughout churches in Jamaica and was instrumental in establishing a congregation for the deaf. Today, Portmore Death is an organized church with more than 80 members. What I have learned since we have the church, the, the deaf persons, they are empowered, and so they are excited to learn more about Jesus. I love to participate in Bible work, Pathfinders and the choir. My dream is to see deaf people and share it with the entire world. What brings me the greatest joy is to see them accepting Jesus and be baptized. I'm extremely happy. The Central Quisqueya Adventist Church in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, hosted a concert drawing hundreds of people. Themed the Star of Hope, the event saw the participation of over 1,600 individuals, making it an impactful community event. The concert brought together more than 110 musicians and marked the first evangelistic event outside the church in 15 years, accommodating a larger community audience. Featuring dramatic performances and an appeal to accept Christ, over 40 people expressed interest in furthering their journey with Jesus. 
The concert emphasized the importance of sharing the gospel and planting the word of God in people's lives, providing hope through inspiring music and uplifting messages. Established in 1985, the Central Quisqueya Seventh-day Adventist Church has over 500 active members and is the largest Adventist church in the Dominican Republic. If you want to know more about the Seventh-day Adventists and what they believe, this is for you. Today, Frank Hazel will lead a discussion about fundamental belief number 26, death and resurrection. Then what happens when we die? What happens to us when we die uh, is that we are asleep. We are asleep. It is, the Bible describes it as a type of sleep. In fact, um, Jesus said, said to the disciples when Lazarus had, had died, he said, ah, Lazarus sleeps. And they said, Lord, if he sleeps, let's go wake him up. The Lord said, all right, but let me, let me, let me, let me clarify. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. Yeah. Um, but the Bible often, uh, in many places, describes death as a rest, as a sleep. Death is not as devastating a thing. It's not the final word. It's not final. Yeah. So God can describe it as sleep, even if we see it as the worst thing in, uh, that could happen to us. Mm. But when we are in Christ and when we know God and when we are in relationship with God, we take on the same mind of God, which is, I'm not going to fear this thing. Yeah. Because once I die, the, if I'm faithful, the next face I see is my Savior. Uh, I don't know, Kelly, if you have some thoughts that's, about that's that. That's a really good distinction that you're making here, that um, the, the language of sleep really is a metaphor, mm -hmm. and it emphasizes the power of God to wake us up again, to resurrect us again. Um, it's not necessarily that the, the state of being dead is equal to being sleep, mm -hmm. uh, asleep. It's really the... the it, it, it's a picture. It's a picture. It's a metaphor. It's a way of describing something, emphasizing the, the possibility of a future resurrection. God is attempting to finish exactly what he started mm -hmm. when he created us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he didn't... Sin was not supposed to be our lot. Yeah. It interrupted... A, 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 an intimacy, it interrupted a love relationship, it interrupted a family, it interrupted eternity. Mm -hmm. God wants to get us back mm -hmm. to what he started, I believe, in the beginning, which is to live in relationship with this creation that he loves so much. Yeah. So we are not in an endless loop. Uh, the resurrection points us to a reconnection. Mm -hmm. There is a hope that goes beyond death. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the resurrection uh, that you mentioned. Sabbath school classes launch music social project in Brazil. In the Hands That Play initiative, participants engage in choir lessons, music theory, and instrument practice. Here at the Adventist Church of Santos Dumont in Vila Velha, we saw the need to bring an evangelistic project focused on the Sabbath school to the streets. We have a strong desire to reach out to our neighbors, including those who are in need, very much in need and close to us. And our idea is to connect this entire project because music attracts people. So our idea is to attract people to us so that we can be closer to them, so that they can be reached for Jesus. Well, my sister is from this church, right, and she is Adventist. I am Baptist. So, since she knows that I like music, she said, Marina has a very good project at the church, and we are doing a work. Do you want to participate? She asked. I said, I want to. Music with myself. I think that music greatly enhances the church, you know? I think it is a very good form of evangelism because there is nothing that moves me more than music. Perhaps it moves me more than a sermon. This project operates every other Sunday. We have a choir, first the choir class, and then we have theory and the instrument. 
So here we will have saxophone, trombone, trumpet, actually instruments that are played in an orchestra. The purpose is to encompass the entire church, regardless of age group. And also considering that children, they also have a greater ease in learning. So we have to take advantage of this age because normally they learn faster than us adults. The project is going really well. It is helping a lot of people. My mom is an example of this because she told me that she wanted to have this opportunity as a child, but she didn't have it. Only now is she having it, so she wants us to do it so that in the future we can learn and play some instruments, so that we can at least know some things because we want to be one thing, but we can have other opportunities, other options as well. It is an important project because it is our church's response to the call of Christ. Identifying what people's needs are around us, going after them, offering help, being willing. By making this movement, the church grows and also makes the name of Christ known. The Sabbath school is a missionary school. We are here to understand the Great Commission and to fulfill it. So, when the church starts to move in this direction, it is truly a great joy. Not only to learn and keep that knowledge within four walls, but to go beyond that, to act in a missionary way, intentionally in our community, in our family, in our circle, and to go beyond that. Adra Ukraine continues to provide essential support to Ukrainians after two years of conflict with Russia. Living conditions worsening in Ukraine and the growing demand for aid underscore the severe impact of the conflict. The damages caused by military actions and the technological disaster at the Kakovka hydroelectric power plant, making vast areas uninhabitable, have been catastrophic. The displacement of people due to the loss of control over significant parts of the territory adds gravity to the situation. The substantial aid provided by Adria Ukraine, thanks to the generous support of international partners and volunteers worldwide, is noteworthy. The Adventist NGO offers comprehensive assistance, including food, financial aid, evacuation programs, and shelter, addressing medical, water supply, and non-food needs such as clothing, footwear, generators, etc. Adra Ukraine's holistic response to thousands of people affected by the war highlights the importance of international support in rebuilding lives amid challenging conditions. Medical missionary work in poor villages of Pacific countries opens doors and breaks barriers. In a village where initially they were not allowed to build a church during a disease outbreak, the Adventist health team was invited to help. Impressed, the community transformed into a health-promoting village, and now professionals provide assistance to residents in their homes. The medical missionary work is a door opener. It breaks down prejudices with other people. And a good example is one such village. This is a big village. And uh, years ago, the members of our church wanted to build a church on the side of the village, but uh, we were not allowed to. We were actually virtually chased to go outside of the village. So the church was built about three miles from this village. And during the outbreak of these NCDs, non-communicable diseases, people in the village started to get sick with uh, diabetes, with uh, obesity, with uh, heart problems. The chief of the village himself and the wife had some health issues. So the very first people that they could turn to because they've heard about the Seventh-day Adventists going into villages doing health assessments and the various wellness centers that are helping out in their various villages. So they invited our health team to come into the village. We were given a whole hall where we could do health assessments. We were invited into his house 
We got their, their, their blood sugars and their blood readings done, and they were so happy that they have offered their village to, be, uh, to become a health-promoting village, where we now have two health workers working full-time in the village and uh, going house to house, helping people out that are sick and people that need help. In Chile, children and teenagers embarked on an unforgettable journey filled with joy, learning, and special moments. The Seventh-day Adventist Church extended a vacation Bible school to the community promoted by the Central Church of Temuco. Over five days, children aged 5 to 14 enjoyed Bible lessons, culinary adventures, and activities emphasizing healthy nutrition. In addition to serving the Adventist community, the initiative reached non-Adventist children, providing a unique experience for families. Held in various cities in southern Chile, the church's active involvement and the enthusiastic participation of teachers made this adventure memorable, blending joy and lasting learning. In the heart of India's tech capital, Bangalore, an expanding Adventist congregation blends the fast-paced tech lifestyle with spiritual growth. Transitioning from makeshift classrooms to a new church building, they cater to a growing community and enthusiastic youth committed to outreach. Bangalore is sometimes referred to as the Silicon Valley of India because it's the center of the nation's tech industry. With large multinational technology corporations setting up their headquarters here, Bangalore is home to top-tier engineering and research institutions. Starting a church congregation here has been challenging, yet a new group of believers has been started on an Adventist school campus. When I was younger, we were running this uh, church in the classrooms. After a few years, we went to laboratories to have the church. The Central Canada Church was organized in 1971 with 30 members. It has grown so much over the years that the congregation needs more space. On an any given day, we have almost 200 and plus or 257 to be precise, people visiting us on this church. If you can see behind me, you will see the whole church will be filled. Church members prayed for a bigger place to worship. In order to accommodate the church activities there, the school inaugurated a church facility on campus. Most people who attend this church speak Kannada, the third oldest language in India, after Sanskrit and Tamil. Almost half of this city's 8 million residents speak the Kannada dialect. This church has a youth group that engages with the community. It's very hard to keep these guys in the church. In other words, they love to go and do outreach. So it was time for us to put things into practice, go out, share this gospel message. So we went, we visited, we spent AVI activities with them. It's unique. They love the activities. They found uh, someone is there for them to care. And I'm sure through us, they're going to connect with Christ. Most of the youth are young professionals working in the medical field and tech companies. Time is their scarcest resource, yet they still engage in ministry. For Global Youth Day, they extended a one-day event into a three-week program. They distributed tracts and visited people in the community and distant villages where there is no Christian presence. The Central Canada Church needed a separate church building structure because they outgrew the school's facilities. Thanks to your 13th Sabbath offering in 2020, they found a property and are moving forward. The biggest Canada church in Bangalore doesn't have its own building until now. The Lord opened his ways and as uh, uh, just a couple of streets from here, we are building our new church. It is 4,300 square feet. And now we are constructing there, two floor there. First ground floor is up for parking and first floor is a church and second is up for balcony. Altogether around 400 to 450 people can be accommodated in that church. From humble beginnings in a small laboratory classroom, this congregation will have their own church. 
The prestigious location offers plenty of opportunity to carry out more ministry, particularly among the middle and upper class residents in the area. Please pray for the Canada Central Church members in their ministry. Thank you for supporting this and future 13 Sabbath offering projects around the world. Thank you for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Not to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope. God bless.